welcome. Hello. Hello, Hello this is Stefan. Fine. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are here in Madrid in OTC Morning Studio, uh, recording live. I mean, uh, so it's uh, actually it's four o'clock now in Madrid. I don't know which time is it in your place. My name is Stefan. I am working for eight years uh, for Monin Company as a beverage innovation director. And this is Rezus. Hello, I've been working the last five years for an OTC group that is uh, imported in Spain for Monan. So I'm the Monan uh, ambassador in Spain. So a few words about Monin. I mean, Monin is a family company. He has been created a little bit more than 100 years ago by, Olive, by uh, George Monin, which is the grandfather of Olivier Monin, which is our president today. At this time, Georges Monin was a wine seller and after he started to produce liquor. And uh, many, many times later, I mean, we produce syrups. Uh, now we are exporting into 150 countries and we have 150 flavors. And in those 150 countries, you have people like Rezus, like brand ambassador, which are really linked to the professional to explain them about the trend and the drinks they can create with the product. Actually, what we're doing today is called Morning Day, right? That it's a training for professionals made by professionals. So all that we're going to see today here, I hope you're going to like it. We're going to see a few trends. We're going to see a different, uh, different ways of, of doing cocktails. So, well. And a few spirits. Yeah, a okay. few spirits as well. Actually, today <laughs> we are going to travel to America. Oh, yeah. And uh, to do different countries. For example, we are going to start to the, from the south. Okay. I mean, uh, and with a special spirit, which is called Pisco. Right. Okay. So, can you a few words about Pisco? Yeah, well, uh, Pisco is a drink made of grape. We all know that. And it's, it's come along a long history and as well a, li a big fight mm -hmm. between Chile and Peru. They both actually claim the, the ownership of Pisco. We yeah. don't know. It's like between Turkish and Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's something weird yeah. because uh, see, uh, the first, uh, the first uh, newspaper that actually printed a, a notice um, from Pisco right, was in Peru. Mm -hmm. But actually, four years later, mm -hmm. in the 1920s, mm -hmm. uh, Chile did said as well that they had Pisco, they did Pisco, so it's kind of a fight there. Okay, so let's start with the drink. Okay, well, I'm gonna do a kind of a pisco sour, right? In mm -hmm. this case, it's gonna be a carrot pisco sour. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna start up with. Uh, let's get a shaker. We're gonna work this classic uh, three pieces uh, shaker for this case because I want to do a really hard shake, okay, good. right? And get a great foam on my. Um, on my pisco sour, right? So the first thing that I'm gonna use is a pisco. Mine is from Chile. Wow, nice one. Well, now let's see which one is better. Yeah. Actually, you can vote. I mean, we are going, each of us are going to do one cocktail, but on the Facebook, you can vote for which cocktail would you prefer to have to drink. So, I mean, you, you will have the, the pisco sour from Jesus, from Jesus, and after I will do another one. So as I like it strong, I'm going to use five centiliters of, his, of pisco. Then I'm going to use a liquor. Oh, French one. A French one, yeah. It's made by the monks, right? Mm -hmm. they, they really know how to use herbs. Yeah. So in this case, we're going to use a chartreuse yellow, or well, jaune. Mm -hmm. uh, jaune, how do you say in French? Jaune. 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 And uh, it's made of 130 plants. You're going to use two centiliters, right? Most of the time, monks knew how to do spirits. Oh, yeah, they do. They have the time as well and the knowledge. Then we're going to use some of our carrot and the fruit. It's actually one of the last of the, of the range, which is carrot and beetroot, because we found out that you have a lot of veggie, veggie trend now, so you can twist all your classical cocktail from like pisco sour, like mull also, because mull is getting more and more popular. And actually, we're going to use two centimeters of our Puree. In this case, as, as, as well as a vegan one, mm -hmm. so we can have that. Then we're going to use some lemon, fresh lemon juice. I'm going to go for three centimeters of lemon juice. Okay. And then we can go for that. We're going to get a little bar spoon of vanilla to make it more round. To Correct. And in this case, I'm going to use the French vanilla because I want a little bit, a little hint of that vanilla on the mm -hmm. taste, as well as the roundness. For those who don't know, I mean, French vanilla, it's much more like a 
custard vanilla cream flavor. I mean, now we're gonna use a little pinch of salt to enhance all the flavor from the from the carrots. It's the magical part. Yeah, it is the, the magic. Great. And now we're gonna use some egg white. Okay. Do you don't mind? Of course. Here you are. I'll have a couple of centimeters of egg white. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're gonna start doing a dry shake. When you do a dry shake, what you want is to create a great foam, and afterwards you add the ice, so you chill the, uh, the drink. But not in the first go. Well, silent bartender. Now we have shaken. Now we're gonna cool it down with some ice. Can we have a chill glass, please? Ah, I know, for example, some bartender when they do dry shake, they just take the strainer take the whisk off and put it to the shaker to make to really whisk the white egg. And in this case, you don't have the dilution of the, of the ice at the same time. You got that chill glass nice, there. Nice coupette. There you go. And now we're gonna just cool it. First, a little clean, because we always get a bit messy when you dry shake, right? So always clean. Then you're gonna close the cocktail shaker and then And as I always say, a cocktail should be cold. You, can, you cannot just shake, pour, and not chill enough your cocktail, because otherwise the people is not going to enjoy it. Now, for a, as a deco, I'm going to use some cumin for the outside of the glass. So we're going to add some flavor. What did you put here? Cumin. Cumin. Right. And if you can smell it. Mmm, mm. nice flavor. So we're just gonna stir. Combines well with carrot. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, when you have flavor that combine well in cooking, I mean, you can, I mean, do them into drinks. For example, cumin and carrot, dill and carrot, uh, chocolate and coconut, pear and cardamom. All these kind of flavor that you can find in in cooking, you can use them also for drinks. Okay. And now to end up, I'm gonna just place a little baby carrot on the side. Actually, it's a different kind of baby carrot. This one it comes from Africa, right? It's sweeter, so it's a little bit nicer if you want to eat it. So that'll be my cocktail. Wow, really there nice. There you go. That's called Newland, mm -hmm. right? But uh, you can call it as a carrot spisco sour, right? Yeah. Okay. There you go. What do you think? Thank you. Boldy, boldy. <laughs> Vote for him. <laughs> okay, so now, Actually, I'm going, I'm going to realize, I mean, a pisco sour also, that I'm going to twist by using le fruit de mona yuzu, oh. okay? So, just a little bit of history about the drinks. What is a pisco sour? I mean, sour, actually, is the basic for bartender. I mean, they have to manage. I mean, in the old time, when, I mean, bartenders start to work, I mean, all the cocktails were based about three ingredients. You had alcohol, bitter, and sugar. After, they get access to lemon, so they start to squeeze the lemon, and they were based their cocktail on what we call the three S, which is sweet, sour, strong. The strong part of the cocktail, actually, let's say that 90% uh, of the cocktail today are based on the three S. For example, if you take margarita, if you take morito, which is three S plus uh, soda and mint, so the three S, sweet, sour, strong. Strong part will be brought by the alcohol. So in this case, it will be pisco. Then you have the acidic part. We make the freshness of the cocktail, which is going to be brought by the lemon, lime, or sweet and sour. Could be used also. But as you bring acidity to your cocktail, you need to balance by bringing some sweetness. Sweetness can be brought either from sugar, from honey, but also from monin product range, which actually contain real sugar sucrose. Actually, so this time I'm going to twist it with yuzu because yuzu starts to be more and more popular, more and more trendy. Yuzu it's actually, citrus. yeah, it's a citrus from, coming from Asia. You can get it from Korea, you can get it from China, you can get it from Japan. We get our yuzu so far from Korea, which is actually one fruit 
but has two flavors. It's a combination of uh, lemon and tangerine, and also in the product, you have some little pieces of the skin. That means when the customer will buy them, he will get a kind of grapefruit flavor. flavor. Yeah. <laughs> so that, the, the, that means that you have sweetness because of the product, co product contains sugar. Because sugar, as you know, as a bartender, is a flavor enhancer. Most of the time, when they do a cocktail, bartender, they put strawberry, and they always add either strawberry syrup, either strawberry sugar to enhance the flavor. And also, it's a natural preservative. That means once you open the bottle, you can keep it room temperature for five weeks. So I'm going to use this trendy uh, yuzu puree. Then I'm going to add some fresh kumquat because I wanted to make it more citrus, more lively. So I'm going to take the shaker. I'm going to use a Boston shaker. Double tin. Double tin. So I'm going to place some ice. in the big one. While I'm working, what I'm going to do, it's I'm just placing the final glass of the customer. I'm going to get some fresh ice for the ice you want? Yeah, or maybe for the first one, I'm going to do it okay, like this. Fine. Up. Then up. let's chill it completely by adding water. Because the drink is, is not going to be served on ice, I'm just cooling the glass first to keep the final drink more cool. Oops. So, I'm going to take, let's say, up, two kumquat. Up. Then I'm going to add le fruit de monin yuzu. So this time I'm going to use 20 ml, which is actually two cl, up of this nice yuzu fruit puree. That's nice. Up. You can. You can smell it's, it's really nice flavor. It is. And uh, even chefs start to use them into cooking, which is nice. Then, of course, I'm going to muddle a little bit just to get up all the flavor from the kumquat to mix well with the yuzu. The, it got uh, the, those little uh, fl uh, sour notes. Mm. Wow. Mix it fresh. It's oh. fresh, yeah. Then I'm going to add, I mean, of course, the spirits. So uh -huh. you choose, I mean, a pisco from Chile, I choose a Pisco from Peru. Oh. Okay. Well, the difference between them, both of them has a really close story, right? Pisco comes from uh, the wall of Cognac in France, right? And actually from Canary Island, when uh, America was discovered, they took some uh, of these vineyards and they, take the, they took them over to a new land, okay? So uh, they start doing this kind of, uh, of a spirit and basing themselves on the cognac, but not aging the product. The difference is between Chile and Peru. Peru use different kind of grapes, right? Actually have um, aromatic ones and they have uh, normal ones. And in Peru, in Chile, they use just kind of aromatic uh, grapes. Go ahead. Okay, so you did a dry shake. I'm going to do what we call reverse dry shake. That means I'm going to, I mean, shake quickly with ice just to refresh the drinks. And after, I'm going to shake without ice because a lot of bartenders say that the ice is breaking the egg white. Up, so let's, a quick one. Up, like this, then just... Up, just strain into the small tin. It's really cold now. Yeah. I mean, a lot of bartenders, I mean, taking care about the ice. You have some bartenders, I mean, they are taking the ice from the ice machine, and after they put the ice into the, the freezer just mm. to make it uh, even harder. harder. Yeah. yeah. And now, I'm so I'm just going to put it back. And as I showed you before, I'm just going to, to take the little strainer whisk from the strainer to make it like froth. Always when you talk about the techniques, it's really important to know all, the, all of them because not always is the best one is for everything. Up, and I said just... So the glass is really chilled, very important. You cannot drink a mild or a, or a hot drink unless it's that way made. So 
Pisco That's sour. That's good. Oh, little drop. Now, as it's a pisco sour, we, we need one more ingredient actually, which is a bitter. Mm -hmm. So bitter. Mm -hmm. tip. So, up. What I'm going to do up, is just put three drops on the surface. I think up. this one is thinner, <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's and after you yeah. just go inside, up, up, and you oh, draw you some little, little heart. And after, because it could be for a lady customer, so up, you can even make it more romantic, like French do, and drop <laughs> a little flower on the surface. And even because what we say to, to the bartender, it's uh, your customer, when they come to your place, they need to leave an experience. Okay, it could be an experience about the presentation of the drinks. It could be an experience about the taste. That's the reason why you can mix different kinds of flavor, depending on where you want, where the bartender wants to drive his customer. Up. So you can do what we call perfect serve, like on a little plate like this. Up. You can just place your glass here. Even, for example, you can take a torch and flame the cinnamon just to, no, no, later, <laughs> just to, to have a smoke. In this case, I mean, the customer have a different flavor in the nose and in the drink. And after to really customize your drink, you can even, I mean, clip a little, little orange. This is, I mean, actually pink grapefruit. Up. That looks great. Up. There you are. Fantastic. So don't forget to vote. And it's not a war, it's just an exchange, but if you would prefer, I mean, Rezus Pisco Sour or this one, I mean, just vote, you are more than welcome. And by this time, while you are voting, we are just cleaning, because the cleaning part is also part of, Very the, important. of the job. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to play. Let's that. go ahead. Okay. Do you want to use them? Uh, no, it's okay. Well, uh, I'll take that well, away. If Thank somebody wants to taste. Please. Okay, so we've been traveling to uh, South America. Now we are going to go a little bit up to the north. We are going to go to Mexico. All right. Mexico, Mexico. Mexico. Oh, Mexico, okay. Yeah. And uh, because you, we, you, are, you can get a lot of nice spirit there. Tequila and mezcal, for example. So we are going to do two creation based on morning product and either mezcal, either tequila. I think this one we choose mezcal. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start. Okay, let's okay. go ahead. So what I'm going to do, it's uh, the famous classical national cocktail in uh, Mexico. Actually, it's margarita. Margarita, most of the time, it's still the three S, sweet, sour, strong. But margarita, most of the time, it's based on uh, tequila. But I'm going to twist it with a mezcal and right. call it Maguerita. Okay. <laughs> As I'm working for Mona and I want my customer, I mean, discover a little bit more about the flavor, I'm going to twist it with, uh, with some Monin product. For instance, this time, because I love, sorry, I love citrus product, so I'm going to use tangerine. Most of the time, what we tell to, I mean, the professional which are working with Monin, it could be barista, it could be bartender. What I, my, my goal is to tell them, you are painter, okay? And you are going to design the, the frame, a picture to your customer. So depending on what you want to design, what about your mood, what about the mood of your customer, do you want something more classical with red fruit, like strawberry, raspberry, something more exotic with passion, mango, we bring you all the color and you are able to design the frame, that, the picture that you want to design. Okay, so I'm just still working on a short drink. So I didn't, I didn't take a classical margarita uh, glasses, which is like a sombrero shape, upside down, but um, I like this more sophisticated Libby glasses. Okay, so I'm going to just cool it down. Now, I'm just going to take, I mean, Monin tangerine syrup. Up. I'm going to shake it, so I'm going to use the shaker. Meanwhile, uh, just to explain the difference between tequila and mezcal, there is loads of people that doesn't know it really. When you talk about tequila, you talk about Jalisco. Jalisco is a, an original denomination, right? So uh, you have one kind of agave that you can use for doing that tequila, that is the blue agave. And then afterwards, you have to think 
you cook that uh, agave in a, in a tin, right? And you use the honey that comes out of agave to ferment, uh, ferment it and then distillation, right? Mezcal is another way around. Mm -hmm. right. It's more traditional. It's more traditional. Actually, yeah. they call it the dad of tequila. Yeah. Because it's made with any kind of agave. Basically, it's almost 98 different kinds of agave you can use. And uh, it's made down in the Oaxaca area, right? This place, I mean, the difference of as well uh, in making is that they cook the agave underneath the ground, right? With actual wood. And so you get that smoky taste out of the agave. Uh, they cook it in a um, volcanic stone oven, and it's really nice because that cooking, it doesn't last like maybe for tequila, 48, 72 hours. You can go over from a week to wow. 14 days of cooking because it's just the, the heat from the stones that cooks the agave. And once you take them out, mm -hmm. of course, that smoky smell is always there. Uh, you're gonna ferment them with the whole thing. I mean, you you go around with uh, with um, how you call it with stone over the agave, and you take all the all the fibers, all the uh, honey, and you ferment that with some water, and that's as well the other difference from tequila. Mm -hmm. And now then, well, you can go for a pot still for the distillation, or mm -hmm. you can go an ancient way that they used to use a clay uh, mm -hmm. still. Yeah. Which is this fantastic, uh, I mean, stone taste. Yeah. Or a bit f and smoky also. It's, it's completely different. It's another thing. <laughs> okay, so let's start with, uh, by placing, I mean, 15 ml of Monin Tangerine Syrup. Okay. When I build this cocktail, I That's mean, nice. I tried, I mean, this recipe, just margarita flavor with tangerine. But when I test it, um, I thought that you need something a bit more, an another flavor. So as, I mean, herbal flavor, you go green. I really, <laughs> really, yeah, I go green like a, like a wall. <laughs> but uh, it's really, really, I mean, trendy. That's the reason why it's really nice, I mean, to make lemonade or, for example, muscomel by uh, mixing, I mean, carrot with a beetroot. Uh, no, sorry, carrot and... Uh, Ginger. And and ginger, or it's otherwise basil, or um, even dill. Dill is really nice with carrot. Otherwise, beetroot and basil, it's really, you can do a lot. So I just place four basil leaves. Okay, as I've got fresh ingredients, I'm just going to quickly muddle to extract all the oil from the basil leaves. They're always soft. I mean, you don't need to pour all your weight on top of the muddle, because otherwise they, they're gonna turn too black, the, all those leaves, and they're gonna be sour. Okay, now I'm going to add lime juice. Oh, 15, 20, five. Oh. Of course, I need spirits, so I'm going to place 40 ml of this nice mezcal. Mm -hmm. Los Santantes, very good. Most of the time when bartenders do cocktail, I mean, the, the alcohol, I mean, measure would be between 40 to 50. Ooh. Oh, for mezcal, maybe it's a bit too much. Yeah. Because we're talking in, in, in the still, the, uh, the spirit that is made of 47 to yeah. 50 yeah, degrees. You might, you, <laughs> might redu, you, might, you might only, only stop to, to 40. Yeah. And of course, <laughs> it's, a, it's a margarita. Up, I'm going to add 20 ml of triple sec. I'll just leave it here. Okay, so because we speak a lot, <laughs> Took a lot, so I'm going to, I mean, strain the shaker. Because all the w that water is going to go into your cocktail. If you don't drain it, it's going to root it. <laughs> oh! Don't check too long, because after the ice is going to dilute. What I'm going to do now, it's, of course, I'm going to get rid of the ice who cool the glass. Now I'm going to do double strain, because I've got the basil leaves inside. So what I can do, it's actually take the strainer like this, put, I mean, just the spoon here, and after I just strain it like this. Up. That looks fantastic. With a nice Eiffel Tower effect. Up. Like this, you can just finish up. So we saw earlier on two techniques about dry shake and reverse shake. But you have some customer who could be allergic to eggs. 
So how can we do a foam on a cocktail? Actually, you have two techniques to do a foam on a cocktail. You have the eggs, mm -hmm. and otherwise you have pineapple juice. Pineapple juice, when you shake it, it makes a little nice foam. But otherwise, today, you can get some product, uh, let's say for mixology, that you can make some foam. This is, for example, I'm using su sucro, which is a uh, emulsification. Oh, fair. Yeah. Oh, so I'm going to take this short glass. I'm going to place up 20 ml of Lillet, which is an aperitif based on wine, coming from Bordeaux area, based also flavor with a dry orange skin. Then, because I want it really citrus, and this is one of my favorite flavor, <laughs> I'm going to add 7 ml of pink grapefruit. Because also what is going to be nice, it's a, I mean, the customer will have different flavor in the drink and on the foam. Here, of course, I'm going to add a little bit of sucro. Very little? Yeah. And then I'm going to mix with this uh, kind of... <laughs> this is a... Um, this Ikea. Is a yeah, well, that's from Ikea, but th that's something that you actually some baristas use for uh, um, doing some emulsion of the, wo of the milk when, the, when it's cold. Mm -hmm. Especially skim milk, it works yeah. better, yeah, yeah. More and more you, you see, for example, from a, I won't say the name, but from a big coffee chain, you can you start to get some drinks with a, with a cold form of the milk. Otherwise, you have some uh, blender, uh, a traditional brand that can have a jug with a special jug to make some uh, cold form from the milk. Okay, that's... That looks fantastic, man. Up. That's it? Wow. Up. And after, I just can just... top on the wow. drink. Up like this. And even what you can do also, after you just take a pink grapefruit, because it's pink grapefruit flavor, Up. and to get... You take the skin and just, just squeeze the skin to get all the oil contained into the skin because actually you have more flavor into the skin than in the drinks. Like this and other garnish. Just place a body leaf like this. Here you are, a tangerine margarita, tangerine and basil margarita. Good Lord. And Thank don't you. forget to vote Stefan for this train, please. Yeah. So, well, let's go ahead then. Thank you. Well, okay. Uh, so now you. So now I'm gonna do a drink based on the. Um, we're talking about Mexico. We're yeah. talking about mezcal. So I'm gonna do a drink based on uh, the Day of the Death, right? Day of the Death, as you know, is a um, kind of a celebration, right? Mm -hmm. In a mix of uh, two cultures, you know, the Catholics and the Mesoamerican. Mesoamerican used to do a cult to the death, but it was in another time. It was around May. And then this uh, was mixed up with all the Catholic culture and they moved it over to, well, Halloween and the two days after. So we're gonna do a little, uh, a little drink, right? It's, it's cinnamon and uh, spicy mango punch, mm -hmm. right? But I've called it Lady Katrina. Lady Katrina uh, is the famous figure of the Day of the Death. So it's a lady dressed up, you know, just bones, dressed up on a dress with a bunch of flowers in her hand. So I'm gonna do, Next in, let's go ahead. We get some ice. I'm gonna be using another kind of mezcal. This, in this case, is a handmade, handcrafted mezcal. And I'm gonna use an old-fashioned glass. First thing, I'm gonna do a crusta, right? So I let it dry meanwhile. So I'm gonna be using some hibiscus, mm -hmm. right? Syrup. Really trendy flavor. And then I'm gonna use some salt that I've just made, crushing up some uh, plain sea salt with hibiscus flowers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna wet up a little bit my glass and then just place it on top of the hibiscus salt. Hibiscus flower is really nice with gin and tonic. Yeah, it we is. use this flower because it's why did I choose hibiscus? Because in all this uh, Mexican region, mm -hmm. right, the, uh, the hibiscus is a flower that they use for drinks, mm -hmm. basically for, well, we, could, we couldn't call it limonada, right, yeah. a lemon, but we could call it, um, yeah, it's, um, 
Well, I'll, I'll get the name in a minute. I forgot yeah. the name. No way. <laughs> Just also because in Africa, I mean, they use hibiscus, what they call carcade, to make to dry the flower to make some tea. So it's really popular all over the world, hibiscus. They do this drink in Mexico with uh, cinnamon, with mm -hmm. hibiscus and some w fresh yeah. water. Yeah. So, well, that's why it's use hibiscus in this case. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm going to use the mezcal. So let's get cool in. In this case, I'm going to choose San Juan, the alipus. As we've said before, don't go too far with the mezcal because it's going to be too strong. And so then I'm going to use only 3 cl of mezcal. Yeah, because this one is 47. Or yeah, this one is 47.5, so <laughs> it's kind of hard. So three we, centimeters. We used to see gusano at the bottom of the... You used yeah. to see it back now because yeah. now it's legal again. Mm -hmm. And that's called, those are called avocado mezcales, ah, yeah. right? You can find the gusano, you can find other mm -hmm. animals yeah. like scorpion yeah. and uh, well, snake as well. Yeah, but well, the gusano is funny because you. But yeah, but there is a legend, but uh, it's not. Uh, if you not if, really if you eat it, I mean, nothing happens to you. It's not no, no, it's not really true. You don't so. see th th think uh, elephant or whatever. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> that you could, that happened. That used to come in because they the bottle bat betcals mm -hmm. with those worms. No, not yeah. because of worms. This is because of betcal. In this case, I'm gonna use to round up my cocktail, two cl of this great apricot brandy. And then we're going to add some spice. I'm going to start with cinnamon, 1 cl. I don't know, we always talk cl, ounces, millimeter, milliliters. Which one do you prefer? Well, in, fr in France, when you study, I mean, they always speak about cl. But internationally, I would say ml. ml, yeah? ML. Ounce is much more when you go to US. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> well. One ml or one CL and it's, in this it's, case. It's easier in ml because after ounce you have to, to say half ounce, quarter of ounce. So I yeah, mean it's harder. <laughs> mill mill makes it more easier. Yeah, we're gonna use in this case uh, this is spicy mango, right? One CL, spicy mango, and we're gonna go for some fresh. You don't mind? Yeah. You change over. We're gonna use some three CL of fresh lime juice. Here we go. You don't mind? Thank you. Thank you. So, that's for now, and we're going to go for a little shake, just a little. Actually, we can mention that we're in Spain because uh, if, you take the, if you take the size of the, of the ice, it's huge, <laughs> it's huge ice cube. It's, uh, really cold, not too long, as yeah. Stefan said before. And now we're going to just place some ice in my glass, right? It's okay, thank you. One. No more than two because they're huge. And then, there you go. And then we're going to just... We don't mind those little pieces of ice because we actually want the fresh drink in this case. That's it. Finished. Then we're going to add a little piece of lime. Just some decoration. Yeah, it's more and more trendy. A lot of bartenders are drying their fruit. What you can do also is to, to upscale a little way your uh, dry fruit. It's to take like a... A little bitter, maybe? Or no, some, uh, for example, with uh, on orange, you can use, I mean, pink grapefruit syrup on apple, oh, yeah. cinnamon syrup. Pineapple, you can put some cocoa syrup with a pencil. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and when you dry them, I mean, all the flavor combined with the flavor of the fruit. And it's really, really nice. Well, there you go. Okay. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. Please vote me. Please vote. <laughs> Please vote. Okay. So we're going to clean up for a minute and we're going to keep on going. So uh, we're traveling where now? Oh, we, we're still going to the north. Now we are going to... Well, it's actually a bit uh, hard to explain. We are going to, to see a place but to speak about another culture. Okay. okay. So well, let's I'll clean. take that away.
Remember, guys, cleaning is very important. Mm -hmm. You always have to be cleaning all day because otherwise you're going to be messy working and when you work with cocktails, sugar, spirits, it's a mess. And especially because uh, what we say is when the customer comes to your place, he needs to have the impression, even if you've really been busy, that he's the first customer of the day, okay? Because, I mean, I mean hygiene, when the place is clean, it's the trust of the customer that you can get, okay? Mm. That's the reason why, even for barista, just to, to really clean the steam of the coffee machine, I mean, to clean the bar, uh, the surface of the bar for bartender, to put back the tools, the stairs, I mean, right position, I mean, uh, in front of the bar to clean the table. It's a really, uh, I mean, you trust the place when you want to go there. Because we say that uh, a customer comes to your place for three things, actually. It's actually, I mean, how the bar looks like, the decoration, the products that you have behind the bar, and after, how you welcome your customer. How you welcome, how you are going to treat your customer, what drink you are going to serve him. That's the reason why we say your customer needs to live an experience. Because, for example, I mean, to drink, I would say, uh, just... A whiskey, he can, he can find this whiskey in any bar, but he will come to your place because you are doing something special, a cocktail with whiskey, flavor with a special product, and he's going to, to enhance your creativity, to get something new every time, and he's going to trust you. Okay? And also because sometimes you are going to explain how you balance your drink, how you build your drink, he's going to tell this story to his, his friend and that is going to be a new customer for you. I mean, everything is uh, linked to how you welcome your customer and a clean place is part of, the, of this history. As the Japanese says, it doesn't matter how clean is a bar, when your customer sits at the bar, always clean up in front of him, just he feels like mm. fresh, <laughs> crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, let's travel a little bit. So, we were in Mexico, and now we are going to go up to the north. So, we are going to speak about Tiki Cocktail. Wow. Tiki Cocktail, <laughs> as you are going to tell me, is not coming from the US, no. Tiki Cocktail, originally, the yeah. story, <laughs> is based on Maori culture. Maori culture is New Zealand and Polynesian island. Okay, Tiki, for us, we have Adam and Eve on Earth, we are the first men and women. For in the Maori culture, it was Tiki. Tiki was the first man on the earth. He was half man, half god. That's the reason why most of the glasses, his head is half the size of his body. So he was a strong guy. Okay. But Tiki culture had been announced in, uh, I would say, 1933 in uh, Los Angeles by two, ba two bartenders. I mean, Trader Vic and... Uh, Trader Vic and uh, Beach, John Beach. And uh, actually, their real name was uh, Ernest Beaumont Gant and uh, Victor Bergerot, so nothing to see. Sober. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, Beachcomber, yes, Beachcomber Bar, yeah. <laughs> and all those cocktails were based on the two, three, four different kinds of rum, exotic juice, and some kind of strange liquor, like Falernum was a, uh, a mix of different spices. Yeah, okay. nobody knew where Falernum came at that time. But uh, actually, it was a blend of, uh, well, as, he, as you said, blend most spice. Of, uh, yeah. blend of a spice they used to use for even drink alone or just go with uh, any spirit. Mm. The legend says that, uh, I mean, uh, a sailor went to the island and uh, this was this old woman who was making falernum and he said, what is it? And she wanted to say, do it yourself. And he, under he understood falernum. So, I mean, that one, one of the legends, the, the, the name came. Okay, if you want to start. Me? Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, well, if you don't mind, I'm yeah, going to yeah, Because I'm going because to use it. I'm going to choose my own head. Yeah, <laughs> yours case. is clear. <laughs> okay, well, I choose a, a glass, a, a glass, a, a tiki glass, in glass, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> because I like to people see what's inside my drink, right? So in this case, I'm going to use a, a pineapple tiki cocktail, right? Uh, you, can, you can find it on our web with wait, some pineapple, right? I'm gonna be using, in this case, some pumpkin spice and a couple of rums. So in this case, let's, let's shake. Let's get some ice. I've called this cocktail Moai, right, as a human figure that is uh, based on, uh, I don't know if you have seen it before, you know these big figures in Pasqua Island? Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's a Moai, a totem. So that's why I call this cocktail Moai. It's going to be based on rum in this case, so it's going to do some rum. First of all, Le Frit, 
we're going to use 3 cl of pineapple. It's really the, the art of the pineapple. I mean, it's, uh, it's really, you, you won't get the same flavor if you use a juice. For example, no, especially, the same. especially for a short cocktail like Cape Pirinha or even Morito. I mean, it's really, really the art. I mean, the, the flavor of the, of the pineapple. Then I'm going to go for one seal of pumpkin spice. You love the spice. I love the citrus, but you love the spice. Actually, I choose the pumpkin spice because it reminds us to a golden falernum that is different mm -hmm. from a regular falernum, right? Yeah. So in that, that mm. pumpkin is going to leave us that taste uh, yeah. in behind the back. It's going to be very nice. So some lime juice. It's over. There we go. Thank you. Two cl of lime juice. And we're going to end up with some rum. <laughs> Strange for chicken. Rum? Tiki? Yeah. Rum? <laughs> now, rum and tiki is usually strong, so I'm gonna go for 4 cl of rum. I'm gonna end up. Yeah. Tiki with was strong. Yeah. It's yeah. strong. I'm gonna use a little overproof rum, but just a little bit because if we go too far with this, people is not gonna enjoy it. So let's do half cl or a bar spoon. Actually, some bartender are using overproof rum into a Empty passion fruit or empty yeah, to burn light it just to flame. <laughs> and now we're going to just shake really well mm -hmm. and let's see what happens. Let's drain this ice, otherwise you're going to get that water in it and I don't want it. So let's blend it a little bit, pour in it. Oh, I'm missing something, excuse me. I'm missing my mango juice. So you're going to use 3 cl of mango juice. <coughs> Couldn't that be? And now, yeah, we're ready for mixing. Let's go. Oh. You know, speaking about uh, shaking techniques, in Japan, I mean, the student, they put some rice in the shaker to shake in the rhythm of the music. Oh. What the, what the, I mean, the, the move they want to do, it's a, like, a, like, a, like a song. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. In this case, we're going to I'm gonna sure Brazilians do the same with maracas. Well, yeah. Probably. We're going to fill that glass with some fresh ice. Oh yeah, and we're gonna pour it over. There we go. There we go. Just a little drop over there. You don't want to miss any of that flavor. And we're gonna use some dry pineapple for the, as a decoration, as a garnish. Let's go for some dry pineapple there. Oh, there we go. I'm going to be using a little bit of cinnamon. In this case, it's a cassia. There we go. And then we're going to use a little touch of orange citrus. So a good peel of orange. I'll, I think I get the... Uh, Peter? Yeah. Nice you, can, you can smell it from here, actually. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I love it. Mm. And as you see, we are not using many straws, as we have to really think about uh, the plastic. Yeah. It's going to last forever. So that'll be it. You can have a, a metallic straw now if you want. There you go. You got one there. Thank you. Perfect. And now we're going to just burn a little bit. Can I go? <laughs> Are you scared? Yeah, no, I trust you. So we just be careful with this. We're going to spice a little bit more. Right, our cocktail. I did a little mess. I always have to clean afterwards. And that's our tea drink. There we go. Nice presentation. Thank you. Now we clean it. There we go. Okay, so 
If you like Jesus Tiki, I mean vote for him. Well me. Okay. So now I'm going to do mine. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to take these glasses because I love it. Okay, I'm going to fill it with a crushed ice. Usually we use crushed ice because these tiki drinks are strong on alcohol. So as people drink it, okay, they, they just change a little bit with that little amount of water. Okay, I'm going to use a Boston shaker. So I'll take away my cocktail if you don't mind, so people can see you properly. There we go. Okay, just uh, speaking about shaker, actually you have a three kind of shaker. You have what we call three pieces shaker like this, that you have a strainer inside. You have what we call the French French shaker, which is actually up. I think that's the body. There you go. Up. Okay, that's the body. Easier. You have a shaker that we call the Parisian shaker or French shaker, which is most of the time uh, 70 CL. One liter is what we call a Deauville. Deauville, actually, it's a famous town in France. And you have the Boston shaker that could be glass and metal or two tin in metal th that we used before. More and more bartenders uh, prefer two pieces in, in metal because they can do double shake, in one shaker in, it, in each hand. Okay, so I place just to... And they last longer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah for, because you don't have glass. Okay, but I mean, I mean, when you're a customer in the bar, I mean, and you see glasses, you see what the, what, what the bartender is pouring like, uh, like yeah, product. And that's okay, very nice. So I'm going to do Mai Tai. Mai Tai is a classical uh, cocktail. I would say tiki cocktail because it's based on rum. It contains, I mean, orange curacao, almond syrup, rum, and lime. Okay, but I want to twist it. I want to bring more flavor. So actually, I love this one because uh, when we have a drink with my, uh, my partner, which is called uh, Florent Martin, that you know, we, al <laughs> we always have a tiki because know, yeah. it's a nice drink. <laughs> and also because uh, it contains my, my favorite Monin product, which is Monin Passion Fruit Le Fruit. Not too so bad. Uh, <laughs> I, I, love this. I love this one because, first of all, of the taste, and because you don't have the seed inside, so easy to use. Uh, and the, tex the texture is really nice. So I'm just going to place 15 ml of Le Fruit de Monin passion fruit. I, I said that uh, traditionally, I mean, Mai Tai, it contains almond. But a few, last year, we launched our super almond syrup, I would say. This is what we call <laughs> Falernum. Super spiced. Because of the bartender couldn't find easy find the, I mean, the liquor Falernum, they all ask us about uh, to develop Falernum syrups. So with the help of uh, Panos, which is working in, uh, in Greece for us, like a brand ambassador, and some other high-end bartender, we launched this syrup. It's actually based on lime, almond, cloves, ginger, and vanilla from Madagascar. I'm going to place the same measure, I mean 15 ml of Falernum. Well, in this case, the trend now of tiki cocktails is really coming out again. Now, all vintage, uh, well, we could call it vintage, right? Yeah, all the vintage cocktails yeah. are taken to a new level, right? Taken to a new step, because nowadays we know more about everything. We know more about spirits, we know more about the products, like in this case, Falernum. We could do our own products uh, at the bar. And this, uh, this product, is as well, is a product that is kind of hard to make. So it's thanks to Bonin that uh, we have now a product to use every day and easy. Just to that, that was some lime fresh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, lime. So I, I put 15 ml of Le Fruit de Monin Passion Fruit, 15 ml of Falernum, 15 ml of uh, Orange Curacao liqueur, wow. 20 ml just to balance uh, the uh, sweetness of uh, fresh lime juice. Of course, I'm going to, to place some rum. So I'm going to use pineapple plantation rum. Wow. I'm going to place 45 ml. That's a very nice rum. They do. Uh a maceration of pineapples into that rum. It's fantastic. And to make it a little bit more smooth, I'm going to add 40 ml of, passion of uh, pineapple juice. Like this. Looks nice. Okay, so keep speaking. I mean, the ice is melting. <laughs> so I'm just going to strain the excess water. Yeah, sure. And after, I'm just going to get, give a big shake. Oh! <laughs> like 
this. Also, if you want to make it more uh, smooth, I will see, or spicy, you can even add some ginger ale or ginger beer on the top. Because it's some product that uh, we more and more see. If you want something I for... A spicy touch, I like the ginger yeah. It's, uh, if you want so for an easy drink, you put ginger ale. If you want a more spice drink, you, put, you use uh, ginger beer. Okay, so now Take I'm it. just going to finish with the garnish. So this is sticky, so we are just going to make his head on okay. the final touch. So let, let's place his, his brain first. Oh. Then, because we used kumquat before, I just cut a little kumquat like this, up. Then I'm going to take a green apple, slice it like this. Up. Little nice uh, Granny Smith for that uh, sour taste that mm -hmm. we love. And it's actually the one which is uh, the easiest to work, the Granny Smith, hmm. from all the apple. Now I'm just going to take to add a toothpick. Like this, oh, and just open. There we go. Just to make his head like this. That's a crown there. <laughs> oh, like this, oh. and after I just place some mint on the top. Okay, and of course. A metal straw. Actually, you have some company which are uh, launching some new straw. I mean, it looks like like the plastic, plastic one, one, but, but it's, it's based on corn and uh, it's biodegradable. Uh, biodegradable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and of course, because uh, as we say that the old cocktail from the 70s are coming back. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Vintage cocktails, as I said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here you are. What we say earlier on, it's uh, when a customer comes to your place, he needs to live an experience. So you can serve your cocktail like this, but you can also go to the step higher. So how can I go to the higher step? I'm just going to, up, oh. especially because we are in a voodoo culture. So <laughs> I'm just going to place this here. Up, just like in place. Then I'm going to use a smoking gun. But when you buy a smoking gun, actually you, are, you get some uh, wood chips that you can use, they are great. But also what you can do, it's uh, you can dry some herbs. So for example, this is mint. You can use rosemary, you can use the different kind of dry mint, which is nice. Uh, so just let's place a little leaves inside. Looks fantastic. Some tea maybe? Some tea also. Okay, so go. go. Here we go. So never do this below fire alarm. Up, like this. Oh. Up. And after you can just take this up and you go to the place of your customer. You can put uh, Hawaiian music. Up. And you just go like this. I mean, uh, people who used to fo follow me on the... Uh, I mean, training, when I do this, I put Harry Potter music. It's kind of mystery and magical. <laughs> okay, so you can vote for this one. Okay, or you can vote for t Tiki from Jesus. Uh, now, also, you can have the opportunity to ask us for some questions. So, feel free. Uh, we are just going to clean and we come back to you. Okay, let's go. You're going to take away your cocktail? Uh, you can drink it <laughs> if you wish. <laughs> well, maybe later. Do you have any questions? We got one. Okay, so the difference between Le Fruit de Mona and syrups. Okay, so it is just actually Le Fruit de Mona. I mean, the both are, will be here for the flavor to bring you flavor to your drinks. Le Fruit de Mona, actually, I mean, the recipe is a 51% minimum of fresh fruit. So that means that you are going to get the texture of the fruit. So for example, when you want to flavor a margarita, when you want to flavor a morito, caipirinha, something that you need to fill the fruit, you will use le fruit de mona. When you want something more, a bit lighter, for example, some wine cocktail, if you want some, uh, or gin and tonic, to flavor your gin and tonic, I'm going to use, I mean, syrup. 
because it's more light and not so heavy. Clear as well. Clear as well. And especially um, a little twist. Uh, you have a wine glass? Yeah, we do. So for example, when, uh, when you want to flavor your gin and tonic, but you don't want the sugar into the gin and tonic, what you can do, it's exactly the same way when you are doing a dry martini cocktail. So, no, this one is just to an example. Okay, you just... When you are doing a dry martini cocktail, for example, for an English customer or for an American customer, you are not going to, to put the same amount of vermouth. One is going to, to, to like it more sweet, and the English one is going to have it more dry. So, for example, what you can do is actually to place the ice into your gin and tonic glass, to place 2CL of, for example, cucumber syrup. After, you just stir, just to flavor the ice, okay? Uh, after 10 seconds that you mix, you just, for example, strain up the just oil, to get rid of the ice which is melting and the, the syrup, and all your ice cube is going to be flavor. Okay, so that's the reason why this is a difference when you, when you want to use, I mean, syrups or le fruit de mona. It's a question of flavor, texture, and the final drinks that you want to design. Okay, there you go. Okay. So, we have any, any more questions around? Cocktail trends? Wow. Well, it's a long it's story. A long okay, you start by uh, Spain? Okay, well, okay. in Spain right now, the trends are going to the non-alcoholic area, mm -hmm. right? We start having lots of, uh, well, lemonades, uh, iced teas, uh, and mostly one big trend that is coming in now, it's uh, freak shakes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I know that all over around the world, it's been a couple of years, maybe, that they've been mm -hmm. working around. Can you tell, uh, tell us a little bit more, a bit word freak about freak shake? Yeah, for well, you get a, a freak shake, basically, is a, a milkshake, any kind of milkshake, right? And, uh, <laughs> and you make them brick. <laughs> a, a brick up top, it on top. So yeah. you can have a donut on top, some white, uh, white cream mm -hmm. we have. Uh, well, uh, chocolate, cot cotton candy, you can have cotton candy, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's just a huge bowl of sweets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, any one of us wants one. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and a proper um, milkshake in there. Yeah, and uh, we start to see art shake, which is a freak shake plus alcohol, huh. like rum, for example. You need, I, I would say that you need uh, something much more edge, edge alcohol to, to combine with freak shake and chocolate flavor. Mm. Okay. And what about your area? Okay, my area, okay, of course, non-alcoholic drink, I would say lemonade iced tea, virgin, which is virgin cocktail. It's a, it's a cocktail without alcohol, but link to so a cocktail, co cocktail culture. To For example, a, a virgin dark and stormy, virgin Cuba Libre, virgin Morito. That would be nice. Yes. And also, after speaking about real cocktail trends, I mean, old fashion are coming back. Uh, Negroni. All the bitterness, I mean, the old... Uh, the aperitifs. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the aperitif and bitter, for example, Negroni, uh, Aperol Spritz, of course, which is new. Yeah, and well, the Spritz is, is the big spritz thing is everywhere. Right now, yeah. And <laughs> also another trend, we, what we call Shime. Shime, it's, uh, I would say, low alcohol cocktail. So it could be based on wine, it could be based on beer, it could be based on cider. Otherwise, it's a regular cocktail that instead of 4CL, you will reduce to 2CL. Okay, this is a trend that we say. Yeah, so okay. the train is low alcohol in general. Yeah. But so actually what we found out with the train is like fashion. For example, it's, uh, it's coming and going. Okay. Just speaking about fashion, in Monin we are launching six products every year. I mean three and three. It's like summer collection and winter collection. I mean to be able to answer to the needs of the customer. For example, we have some syrup that you can really uh, twist your cocktail depending on the season. For example, like winter spice, like, which is a combination of flavor, like pumpkin spice also. That uh, pumpkin, oh. we know that is from Halloween to Christmas, I would say. Yeah. So we are really here to, to help professionals. Okay, another question? Best moments to drink a cocktail? Any <laughs> time. Any time in the day. <laughs> well, I always say, before one o'clock, you're a pirate <laughs> if you drink. <laughs> but after that, I mean, any, as we were talking right now, mm -hmm. the aperitifs are coming very, very long. So if you want to have a spritz, let's say, yeah. it's a low alcoholic alco uh, drink, and uh, you can have it before, before your lunch. Yeah. I mean, Actually, aperitif, it's coming from Italian language. Yeah. Uh, it, it means aperire, which means open. So it open you to, 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 the, to, to have eat. a meal after. So I would say uh, after a long journey, you need something refreshing for like cucumber base, for example, the, this watery flavor, uh, or watermelon also because it's really close cucumber, watermelon, and melon flavor. And uh, after 
the the more you get into the night, the uh, anything, <laughs> anything really. Uh, after, of course, after, on, after, on what you're after dinner, you can have a, you can have something based on liquor, like a black Russian. Or uh, actually, I went to to London with uh, some uh, some colleague, and we found out that uh, in any bar making coffee, you have espresso martini. Oh. Okay, espresso martini now in UK is really I would say mandatory on the menu. Okay, so I hope you enjoy it. I mean, don't forget to vote, and uh, you can really follow us on Facebook page. And don't forget money.com. Money.com is, for example, you get uh, a flavor. Okay, Falernum, for example. What can I do for, for with Falernum? You have 2,000 recipe that you can. Uh, and then your creativity. And remember, every six months around that, we launch the new, uh, the new recipes for winter, for summertime, right? And uh, well... We organize Morning Day also. Yeah, we organize Morning Day. So if you want to contact your local uh, ambassador, just give us a call. In, this, in the case of Spain, we're here right now. It's OTC, right? So OTC.es, you can find us there. And otherwise, stay tuned. Mm -hmm. and also, because we are in Spain, I mean, uh, don't forget Cocktail TV. Yeah, okay, that's because it. it's a nice channel <laughs> to, to learn about products and uh, new trends, to visit some bars even. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so without testing, unfortunately. Yeah, they, but, they uh, have, a great, have a great program on that. I hope you, I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget uh, that Monin, we are here to help you to enhance your creativity. Don't, don't be shy to contact us on Facebook. Uh, my name is Stefan Moesle. And also you can contact your local brand ambassador. Jesus like Lombreras Jesus, for in example, case. Like Claudio Felipe in Portugal. I mean, just to speak about uh, Iberian uh, place. <laughs> but uh, and, uh, we were happy to welcome you in the OTC Morning Studio. Thanks Please. a lot for following us and uh, you. see you soon. See you soon.